In today's video, I'll expose seven dangerous myths about cholesterol that could ruin your life. These are vitally important, yet wildly misunderstood. Your doctor might have told you to avoid eggs, cut saturated fat, or prescribed a cholesterol-lowering medication. But the fact is, blindly chasing low cholesterol can make things worse. In this video, you'll discover how cholesterol really works, the commonly overlooked detail that changes everything, as well as practical strategies to actually improve cholesterol function, because that's what really matters. By the end, you'll walk away with a solid plan to support your heart, protect your eyes, and stay mentally sharp as you age. First, let's start with a top-level myth, the blanket rule that cholesterol is bad for you. That message has been on repeat since the 1950s. Cholesterol was blamed for clogging arteries, causing heart attacks, and driving people to an early grave. We'll explore how that false idea became medical law shortly. But for now, the basic message was that the lower your cholesterol, the better off you were. Supermarkets became flooded with low-fat everything. People swapped butter for margarine and cholesterol became the bogeyman. But here's the thing, cholesterol is not some strange toxin floating around your bloodstream. Every single part of your body needs cholesterol. It literally holds your cells together. Furthermore, it's responsible for hormone balance. Plus, 75% of your brain is cholesterol. Without it, our bodies would shrivel up and collapse. So if cholesterol is that essential, why did it get such a bad reputation? Because doctors started blaming it for the damage they were seeing inside arteries. But just because cholesterol shows up at the scene of the crime doesn't mean it's the one who pulled the trigger. Cholesterol appears when there's already damage because it's part of the body's repair system. So, does high cholesterol increase your risk for heart attack? Nope. That theory doesn't hold up to the data about half of all people admitted to hospital with heart attacks have what's considered healthy cholesterol levels. And plenty of people with cholesterol over 200 live into their 90s with strong hearts. That tells us the total cholesterol number isn't the predictor we were told it was. It's the wrong measurement. What matters is how your cholesterol behaves. Not the quantity, but the quality. You've probably heard the terms LDL and HDL. LDL is often called bad cholesterol. They're not cholesterol themselves, they're transport particles. Think of them like trucks. LDL carries cholesterol out to your tissues in order to repair damage and keep your body working. HDL clears out any excess. When LDL is large and fluffy, it works optimally. But when it becomes small, dense and oxidized, that's when it can start sticking to damaged artery walls and causing inflammation. So the real danger isn't high cholesterol or even LDL levels. The problem is small, dense, damaged cholesterol, as well as artery damage. We'll talk about how that happens shortly. The thing is, most doctors only run a basic blood test. If you want the full picture, ask for an advanced lipid panel. Some labs call it a cardio IQ, or expanded lipoprotein panel. Next up is the myth that statins are a good idea for most people with high cholesterol. Once your total cholesterol, or LDL, hits a certain number, statins are usually the first recommendation. It's treated as a standard next step, often without much discussion of long-term effects, or whether you even need it. Statins work by blocking an enzyme in your liver. This enzyme helps produce cholesterol, so when it's blocked, cholesterol levels drop artificially. Your blood tests might now look healthy on the surface level, but this can cause serious problems. That same enzyme also produces CoQ10, a molecule your body needs to generate energy in your heart, your muscles, and your brain. If your CoQ10 is depleted, your mitochondria can't make energy properly. That's when you start feeling flat. Your muscles ache. Your thinking slows down. If you know anyone taking a statin, they often complain about these problems. Also, most people have no idea that statins affect hormones too. Cholesterol 
is the base ingredient for testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and cortisol. If your cholesterol drops artificially, hormone production slows down. That's when you get low libido, mood swings, stubborn belly fat that just won't go away, and all sorts of other problems. And that's only one type of medication. Others, like bile acid resins, reduce cholesterol by binding bile in your digestive tract. But they also bind fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, leaving you vulnerable to vitamin deficiencies. That means weaker immunity, inflammation, clotting problems, and increased risk of stroke. Now, before we continue, let's be clear that you should never stop taking any medication based on what you see in a YouTube video alone. But if you're currently on a statin or any other cholesterol drug, it might be worth having an honest conversation with your doctor about whether you really need it. And if you're not happy with the answers you receive, seek a second opinion. Because sometimes we really need to advocate for our own health. We've got a whole separate video on cholesterol medications that breaks down the benefits, risks, and nuances. So you can walk into your next appointment armed with the right questions. I'll leave a link to that in the description box. Okay, right about now, you might be asking, why are doctors so obsessed with cholesterol in the first place? It goes back to the 1950s, when a researcher named Ansel Keys pushed the idea that saturated fat and dietary cholesterol were the cause of heart disease. He created a graph linking fat intake to heart attacks across a handful of countries. His seven countries study became the foundation for public health policy. But what most people don't know is that he actually studied over 20 countries. And he left out the ones that didn't fit his theory. The seven countries study was observational, not controlled, and filled with problems. But that didn't stop it from becoming the basis for the American Heart Association's guidelines in the 1960s. From there, the message took hold. Fat was the enemy. Cholesterol had to be lowered, and a whole generation was told to swap out eggs and butter for cereal, bread, and margarine. Then came the food pyramid, the chart that put grains at the base and told people to eat as little fat as possible. That recommendation didn't come from clinical trials. It came from policymakers trying to create a one-size-fits-all model backed by agricultural interests. Grain production was subsidized, processed food companies got on board, and suddenly low-fat foods, sugar-loaded snacks, and industrial oils filled the shelves, all stamped with a heart-healthy label. This obsession with fat brings us straight to the next myth, that saturated fat clogs your arteries. Now, there's a difference between eating a deep-fried pastry from a gas station and eating a piece of grass-fed beef. Context matters. Lumping all saturated fats together and calling them dangerous never made scientific sense. In fact, some trials showed that people who ate more saturated fat had better survival outcomes, especially when it came from real food sources like grass-fed meat, quality butter, and coconut oil. Saturated fat is stable. It doesn't oxidize easily. It doesn't turn rancid under heat. And it helps form the very membranes that surround your cells. That's especially important in your heart and brain, where structural stability matters. That brings us to the next myth, that eating cholesterol raises your cholesterol levels. Your liver produces most of your cholesterol, around 80% and it adjusts that production based on how much you eat. If you eat more cholesterol, your liver makes less. If you eat less, your liver makes more. It's a feedback loop. That's how your body stays balanced. Dozens of modern studies have confirmed this. For the vast majority of people, eating eggs, shrimp, or liver doesn't raise LDL in any meaningful way. In fact, the US Dietary Guidelines quietly dropped their recommendation to limit dietary cholesterol back in 2015. They didn't make a big announcement. They just removed the warning, because the evidence wasn't there. So, if saturated fat and dietary cholesterol aren't the problem, what is? 
One of the biggest culprits hiding in plain sight is vegetable oil. Despite the name, these oils don't come from vegetables. They're extracted from things like soybeans, corn, canola, cottonseed, and sunflower seeds, usually with high heat, chemical solvents, and industrial processing. They're cheap to produce, so they're everywhere. They're in your salad dressings, your granola bars, your dips, your marinades. Even so-called healthy products use them to bulk out ingredients or cut costs. But these oils are high in omega-6 polyunsaturated fats. And while your body needs a small amount of omega-6, the amount people consume nowadays is completely out of balance. When omega-6s dominate, and especially when those oils are already oxidized or heated during cooking, they create oxidative stress, which directly damages LDL particles. That's what creates the small, dense, sticky LDL that sparks inflammation. Not the cholesterol itself, but what's been done to it. And the problem doesn't stop in your arteries. Damaged LDL interferes with immune function, slows healing, and triggers the kind of low-grade inflammation that quietly chips away at every part of your health. From your brain, to your gut, to your joints, to your arteries. The irony is that these oils were promoted as the heart-healthy alternative to butter and lard. But the fact is, they're unstable, fragile, under heat, and full of omega-6. So, when people switch from saturated fat to vegetable oil to protect their heart, they're often doing the opposite. It's trading structural stability for chemical chaos. And it's not just the oils, it's what people eat with them. Refined carbs and added sugars fuel the same damage in a different way. Firstly, they spike blood sugar. And when your blood sugar stays high too long, it creates the perfect environment for small, dense LDL to form. This is why you'll see people with normal LDL still end up with heart disease. Because the real issue isn't how much cholesterol they had, but the state of their cholesterol. Before we get to the habits that actually protect your cholesterol, a quick reminder. If you're finding this helpful, please click the like button so more people can see it. And if you want more practical videos on heart health, brain health, and how to age well, hit subscribe and turn on notifications. We've got more videos coming out every week and you won't want to miss them. Now, let's talk about what actually supports healthy cholesterol. First up, you need quality fat-soluble nutrients. You'll find them in foods like pasture-raised eggs, grass-fed butter, aged cheeses, liver, and wild-caught fatty fish. Then there's magnesium, arguably the most important mineral for healthy cholesterol function. Think leafy greens, pumpkin seeds, avocado, and vegetables more broadly. You also need antioxidants, compounds that protect LDL from becoming oxidized. That's what makes polyphenol-rich foods so powerful. We're talking olives, extra virgin olive oil, berries, turmeric, garlic, and herbs like rosemary and oregano. These strengthen your cells and shield your cholesterol from oxidative stress. And of course, fiber. Soluble fiber binds to bile acids and helps your body clear out excess cholesterol in a natural way. You'll find it in whole plant-based foods like vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, and beans. Breakfast is arguably the most important meal to get right because it sets your hormonal balance for the whole day. So next, watch our video on seven breakfast foods that doctors warn against, as well as the best breakfast options. Click the image on screen for that, and don't forget to click like and subscribe.